Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw. It's the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Available right here at YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Also on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Uh, uh, iHeartRadio, Google Play. SoundCloud. I already said SoundCloud. Podbean. I already said that too. You don't pay attention when I talk, I tell you. No. The, the internet is a buzz over my comments about Brock Lesnar and Larson. Mm-hmm. At least our Twitter kind of is. People are like, ooh. A lot of people like feel the same way I do about Brock Lesnar. And I was thinking about it even more last night. Yeah. Well, just, what happens in your typical Brock Lesnar match? A bunch of suplexes. When you think of a Brock Lesnar match, it's all just Brock sauntering about the ring smiling like an asshole and then suplexing people. Pretty and much. it's always very slow. The first time he did that to John Cena was entertaining because we, we hadn't seen anybody uh, beat up John was, Cena to yeah. that degree. It was and also it was like, wow. shocking how many like suplexes he gave him. Like that's yeah. one suplex that he started, of course. Um, and that was that was different. That yeah. was something different. Uh, but nowadays it's just it's obvious that he phones it in. Like he just sort of stands there and smiles and he walks around. The, with his giant uh, arms. the Hell in the Cell match with the Undertaker was was decent. Mm. That was the best of their trilogy because yeah. they've had three, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was the best of their trilogy. He can put on an interesting match if there's a good story going on, but I just feel like WrestleMania soured it for me. And then hearing about Ambrose talking about it really soured him on me. Yeah, so, no, I agree with From that. now on, his name is Bathroom Break Lesnar. <laughs> Latrine Break Lesnar. <laughs> Latrine Break Lesnar. There you Try go. Trying to make it more alliterative. More alliterative. 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 So we had a SmackDown last night, yeah? We did have a SmackDown last do we, night. Do we have a sound effect for uh, SmackDown? Sm- I don't oh, by the way, a couple of people complain about your raw cap sound. Because it's, it's too shocking. It's not the first time I've done it. It freaked out a cat, for one thing. It's not the first Another time I've done Another person it. had them in your in your ear in their earbuds, and it's it's too much. So I think from now on, officially, if you're gonna do it, just put do this. Just have some respect. Go do this. I don't want to have to go into editing and, and change it every time. Raw like that. Is that better, people? That's probably better. That's that's a bit less. Sometimes you go overboard. Can I do this? Sometimes you're too much. Can I do it? <laughs> can I do it directly in the microphone like this? No, you can't. That's the point. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do uh, whenever we do it now. When I do the edit, I, when you say "raw," I'm gonna edit in my "raw." So it's your raw sound effect twice. Two times. I don't like that at all. Sometimes you're just too much. Sometimes you're you're too amped. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's an adjective to describe me on a regular basis. That's your problem is, is that you're too amped. The yeah, guy okay. who yawns during every intro, of every podcast. Yeah, is too amped. So uh, SmackDown. So it, after the brand split, after the draft, SmackDown was down here, Raw was way up here, and they very slowly are even. As I out. said in our machine recap, in a couple months, we're going to get two weekly guaranteed mediocre wrestling programs. Look, uh, I was, in, I'll, I'll just say that you're right. Uh, I was entertained by, by yeah, SmackDown last fine. night because I think they're finding their strengths. Yeah. Um, and I think, okay, so for example, the show opened. With uh, the WWE World Championship title scene. Yeah, uh, that's incorrect. The show opened with Randy Orton. Backstage. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The show opened with your uh, Saturday Night Live cold open. Yeah. With, uh, you're, I like that. With Randy Orton and Alberto Del Rio, who I like. I mentioned this yeah. on Recap. Uh, I like Alberto, too. There's word going around that his contract is about to expire and he's not looking to renew or re-up. However... I really hope he would. He's the kind of guy who can make the IC belt look look really good. I think he's sort of above the IC belt, but yeah, he's he said in interviews that that's the one title that he hasn't got. So that's the one he wants, yeah. And that's the one he wants. Um, so if they, I really hope they do re up him and give him sort of a renewed push. You see that sometimes if somebody's yeah. contract is about to expire. Well, I mean that kind of happened when he came back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I I really kind of wish that they would have followed through with that whole Zeb Coulter thing. Because I just wanted to know what they were doing with it. Yeah, it where were they going? Very with that? strange. It was really weird. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it opens with Del Rio and uh, Orton, and uh, they have they have a pretty decent little back and forth. Um, what did Orton uh, Del Rio like threatened his shoulder or something like that? What was it? Yeah, well, yeah, going into it, um, Del Rio said he was going to destroy Randy's surgically repaired shoulder. Right. That's and right. that and that you know statement played a large role in their match later in the night when. Mm-hmm. 
Alberto did all he could to destroy Randy's. You may you may shoulder. mention this on the recap. It was very much like sort of an old school thing. You, you know, storytelling focusing on working a body part. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Dean Ambrose again. I, I'm referencing the podcast quite a bit. Um, the Stone Cold podcast. But he said that was one of the things that he was talking about promos. It, he was very candid. He was talking about uh, promos, and he was like, he said, you know, I thought that the the this was th- this part was fascinating to me that he said. When he when they were in developmental, first in FCW, and then he was in NXT for a short spell. I think so. When they very first yeah, became very NXT. briefly, yeah. Um, he said everybody said that it was it was it was like oh they don't they don't really give you scripts because he was like yeah we do all sorts of promo classes where they just say get up there and do it yeah and he said you know we always heard that they gave you scripts here but we we didn't think that was gonna happen yeah then we got here and yeah we get a script. And so, uh, and he was talking about that, and, and Austin was saying, it was interesting to hear both those guys talk about promos, because they're both really good, obviously, Austin's one of the best. Yeah. And, uh, and Austin was like, uh, uh, Dean said, you know, the promo can also help uh, establish a story going into a match that you can focus on in the match if you want to go to it. And, for, and he said, for example, and then he went on and cut a really, really cool off-the-cuff promo about him and Austin. They're going to fight at the fairgrounds. And he says, Austin, I know things about you that nobody else knows. I know that you have a bum knee. And he started talking about what he's going to do to his knees. I'm going to chew it off. I'm going to take it off, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And he said, and then when he stopped, he said, that's the kind of thing that we can then go to or not go to. And now it's in the audience's mind. Yeah. And so that match, the Del Rio versus Orton one, is sort of like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I like when they do that. You know, they, they have a little built-in story for your match, and that's yep. always good to have. Yep. So that was a strong segment. Cut to their weird Quantum Leap-esque titles with yeah. the beam everywhere. And it's just, it's like blue vomit. Yeah, it seems like someone played a Halo 4 mm-hmm. and thought that was a cool idea for a, a title sequence. Just too much. Yeah, I mean, SmackDown should really be like the the... the the smaller, scrappier. You know what? NXT has a really good... It, it encapsulates them very well, their opening yeah. title sequence. And SmackDown's looks like SmackDown's title sequence looks like it should be for a show that's massive. Yeah. But they should really be the smaller I mean, the way they, show. the way they shoot it makes the show feel smaller. Right, it does, yeah. To, yeah, to its benefit, I think. Like, in, in some, I mean, res- I still, I still in some respects. I still don't like the crane, but I guess I'm kind of getting used to it. They were they were they were more heavy on cranes during promos last night as opposed to the matches. Yeah, <clears throat> which I think which I think is fine. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, anyways, uh, I really like NXT's opening time. Yeah, I, I do like too. their song and everything. Did you have you noticed that they added like a laser beam sound into it? Yeah, at every beat, it's yeah. <laughs> it was like, that's, they, that? that's been in there for a while. <laughs> Not that long. For a little bit since like Joe's been champion. I think Not it was around. That. I don't know about that. Since the last, uh, the last takeover, the takeover before that, I think I remember. Really? Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see here. So we get our cheesy credit sequence. Open up with uh, Bray and uh, the new Wyatt family, just Bray and Eric. Yeah. Eric Rowan in the ring. Uh, Bray cuts a promo talking about, oh, man, I'm a victim, man. I'm a victim of the man, man. Well, he was saying that Dolph, by exposing the turnbuckle, cheated to win. And therefore, Rob Bray of his chance to be champion. Right, right. I like that Bray, for the first time, seemingly, cares about being champion. Yeah. Cares about taking that. I want to know what Bray's going to do with the title. Uh, so He'll probably we... lose a lot, because that's what they do with the, the Wyatt family. <laughs> it's true. I got a, I got a huge problem. You got a way, huge problem with those people. With the way they treat the Wyatt family. I don't, I don't think they're being fair to them. They're not being respectful. There's huge money in the Wyatt family. There's, dude, there's so much money. There's huge there's money in so Bray Wyatt. Much money I don't know Wyatt why family. they continually build them up a little bit, only to job them out. Every fucking time they do it. And yet he's still a threat. He's still a threat. Let me ask imagine, you something. Imagine, imagine how awesome it would have been last night. The main event. Main, we'll, I'm sure, talk about it in more uh, detail later. Yeah. But it was Dolph and Dean against the Wyatt family. I thought for sure the Wyatts were going to win. Dude. Yeah! <laughs> I know! <laughs> Have Bra- like Play off the the opening segment where, where Dolph super kicks Dean. Do some sort of discord between the two of them. Builds their story leading mm-hmm. up to SummerSlam. And have Bray take advantage of Sister Abigail on Dean mm-hmm. to get the pin. Yeah. Afterward, you can still have the bit where Dean gives uh, Dolph the dirty deeds. You can do that as planned. Have the Wyatts win 
he's talking so much Brea's about wanting to chance the title, but when he keeps on losing, or, or the Wyatt family keeps on losing, he's not credible. I know you say, well, he can just win a couple times and it's fine. To a certain degree, that's true. But come on. Yeah. Like, there's no dominant heel on SmackDown. How would he be booked as champion? He would have to destroy everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. I think you're right. Imagine if they booked him like a monster heel, yeah. but a monster heel who could talk. Right. Be huge. And along with, you know, Eric Rowe and hopefully Luke Harper when he comes back, backing his play. They need like seven people in the Wyatt family. Can you imagine that? If Bray's standing there in front of a crowd I know. and they just do How much wants. money is that? <laughs> it's a lot. It's of money. all the money. It's all the money. I can't all oh, every, so, every money they have. It's so frustrating to me. How you feel about Brock is kind of how I feel about the Wyatt family. <laughs> I can tell. It's good. Oh, I know. It's so frustrating. Uh, like, so, why didn't he win last night? It makes perfect sense. Yeah. It made every bit of sense in the All world. All the sense. And yet they had they had the Wyatt family lose. And it's, uh, so frustrating. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. And it's what happens every time with the Wyatt family. They build them up a little bit just to have them lose. But do you think in this case, it's got to be possible that we've seen before where somebody will lose, lose, lose. Okay, here's, here's the thing. Dolph right now is win, 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 lose. Do yeah. you think this could be a matter of lose, 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 I think this could be win, lose, 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 lose. Look, SmackDown has nobody. Bray Wyatt's going to have that belt. He's going to have that belt. But just think about it. If they spent the next six months, wait, was it four? Yes, eight months between now and WrestleMania, just building Bray up to be like a monster. No one can beat him. Yeah. All leading up to a match for the belt at WrestleMania. Yeah. Whether you have Bray win or Ambrose win, whoever's on the belt then, if if Ambrose is the guy who who ultimately defeats this unbeatable monster, Ambrose is huge. SmackDown, I if Bray this. wins, then you have a, a dominant heel yeah. that you can work around for the next two years. They need to they need to go back and and look at how like NWA was back was booked back in like the seventies, early eighties, where you had these really long feuds with the really long title reigns. Yeah. And that's going to play, that could play to SmackDown's uh, strengths because you have less depth the rest Epic. of the roster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys up here are like so strong. Yeah. But you're right. You need to book Bray strong in order for that to work. Over an extended period of time. And you can have your cake and eat it too. You can book Dolph strong. You can book Bray strong. You can keep Dean the champion and book him strong. You can have all these guys strong, but it's like, you know, an immovable object versus unstoppable force type thing. But like a three-way thing. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see Bray in the th- in a three-way dance? He's going to interfere. He's just going to interfere? Yeah, so- I, don't, I don't. I mean, they, they've already, it's already, what, a week away, SummerSlam? A little bit more than a week Jeez, away? Yeah, we're a week away. It's huh? a week from Sunday. Yeah. Um, Fuck. That's a little soon to be inserting him into the match. Yeah. He's he he And right now he honestly has no claim to, last to night, be inserted into the match. Yeah, that's true. Last night he was he overshadowed it. Bray Wyatt. This is the thing about it though. Bray Wyatt is overshadowing the main event. He's overshadowing Dolph Ziggler. I know. And imagine if he was actually booked correctly. Uh remember back when we were rebooking the first episode of SmackDown when Correct. we were saying back then. Give Bray eight months. Lay waste to everybody on SmackDown. Hit Whether he's in the match or not, mm-hmm. he just starts beating everybody up. Yeah. Him and the Wyatt family. All leading up to that moment where, like I said prior, if it's him and Dean, Dean's one that beats the monster. Dean is huge. Yeah. If Bray is one that beats Dean, you then solidify Dean, then, himself. Then Dean is back on the path of trying to fight this now he's the immovable underdog object. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. Either way, it works. Dean, especially after listening to the podcast, Dean Ambrose needs to be... The Terry Funk from the... He needs to be the guy who either holds that belt or is always chasing the belt when this monster has it. And that's what it should be. And it should be Dean swimming in a sea of Wyatts, you know, to claw his way back. And the more Wyatts you have, the more stories you can tell with that. Yeah. I agree. I agree totally. I'm I mean, Hopefully what they'll do is... Hopefully what they'll do is, regardless of whether or not Bray's in the triple threat, they should... Hopefully this 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 SummerSlam match will. It's already it's already brought Dolph's credibility up a little bit. Yeah, I mean his super kick is like the most devastating move on SmackDown besides the Dirty Deeds. I know it's devastating. Um, and so after SmackDown, maybe or after SummerSlam, maybe Dolph moves on to something else, and we just get Bray and Dean. Man, they had some good matches back in the day. Yeah, they had some really good. Yeah, matches they had back a decent feud a couple years ago. Yeah, no. 
Uh, so anyways... But, I mean, they, they should... I feel like they should interact, Dean and Bray, but they mm-hmm. should not have a match until they have their blow-off thing. Yeah. Like, build it all the way up. Not a singles match between the two of them until WrestleMania, if that's what they're going to do. If they're going to spend the eight months investing and building up that story, they do not have a singles match until then. You know it would be a huge... You know it would be great? It would be great if they did? What if Bray interferes at SummerSlam and costs Dolph his, the title or whatever? The next SmackDown... Have Dean drop the title to Bray. That would create such a fucking buzz about that show. And then until Mania, he keeps it. And then you get your blow off. Yeah. And then that you have, would be And then you have else. Dean go over and, and, and it's a huge moment for Dean. Yeah. Because you need SmackDown. Like, SmackDown's ratings just aren't... There's, I mean, they're, there's, you need to keep things unpredictable. Like that first week on Raw. Things were unpredictable. And you need to keep that going. Like, yeah. it surprised me that they don't book week to week just thinking, okay, we don't, we're not going to play hot potato with the belt. But we can do interesting things week to week. And Eva Marie's titties popping out, while that's cool, that's not unpredictable. I mean, it kind of is unpredictable. But it's not the kind of unpredictable I think we're, we, we, we... You do. want storyline unpredictable. Well, I mean, look, I, I'm fine titties popping out. I'm just saying, on, on, in addition to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, hear, I hear you. Uh, let's see here. Then we had... So we had this big sort of... Uh, Bray comes out, cuts promo, says, I'm a victim. Dean comes out, says, you're a baby. And then uh, Dolph, Dolph comes, comes out, out, doesn't say a word, runs into the ring, gets his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then Dean comes in to help Dolph. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bray gets Dean in position for the sister Abigail. Gotta love that move. Dolph gets ready to go on a super kick. Yeah. Bray throws Dean in the way. <laughs> Dolph super kicks Dean. And then uh, the Wyatt's are gone. Mm-hmm. Dean's laying in the ring. I'm here to show the world. Backstage, uh, Dolph and Ambrose... Are, are heated. They're going it. They're getting yeah. into it. Yeah. Uh, Shane and Daniel Bryan show up. <laughs> it looks like they're such a couple of nerds. All right, guys, hold on. Just, just for they're like school principals. They're like vice principals. I like that you change their profession every week, pretty much. I do. This week they're vice principals. Uh, they break them up and they say, "All right, playa, you're in a tag match in the main event. You two versus the the Wyatts, the Wyatt family. Uh, and in our main event, that was our main event. Uh, yeah, we touched on that a little bit. Yeah, we touched on that." Uh, you touched on that very hard with the the Wyatts. They shouldn't lose till WrestleMania. They shouldn't lose till WrestleMania. Or even after that. I like that. Bray looked great with that belt slung over yeah, his shoulder. He looked fantastic. He looked great. Uh, American, the American Alpha Team versus Mikey O'Shea and Sasha Derevko, aka Mike Vega. Uh, this was this was great. Okay, this is the continuing saga of why I'd prefer to have the revival in SmackDown. There's just that American Alpha comes out. They're all full of happiness. Energy. They're they're like the Apollo Crews of the tag team division. They're just happy to be there. They're very physically gifted in the ring. The only difference is that Gable and, and Jordan have like boatloads of charisma that I haven't really seen yet with Apollo Did Crews. you see American Alpha on Talking Smack last week? I did not. Okay. So I know they were on. I know they were talking to Renee Young and Daniel Bryan on. Were they indeed Talking Smack? I don't know about that. But... Uh, <laughs> I just wanted, I was curious if you had seen it to see how they were presenting themselves in terms of their characters. They said we're the best tag team there is. That was basically their whole thing was that's their thing right now. They're just pure baby. We're the best tag team there is. We're the best. Happy to be here. That's their thing. No edge whatsoever. They would give some good promos in NXT too. I know they would. Here's the problem. And we mentioned this on, on, on recap show on Machinima. In NXT, they, 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 they've, they've picked up their thread from NXT with nowhere to go. Because in NXT, they start out as a reluctant tag team, or Jordan was reluctant to be in a tag team with Gable. Gable was trying to sell him on the idea, and eventually he won him over, and they started having success because winning matters. Winning changes everything. So you had this sort of underdog team, these two guys who sort of were reluctant to be together. Then they were, they had success and they understood and appreciated each other and they were happy about their success. Yeah. You move up to SmackDown. Now their happiness doesn't really have a motivation. Yeah. Because they're that that's done. That was an NXT. They, they got to where they, they are. Yeah. Now they should be trying to achieve a new goal. They should be determined and not just happy to be there. They do this whole, especially Jason Jordan, who is a big dude. He looks like a stud. He looks great. He looks like a million bucks. And he comes out and he hunches over when he does it. And this makes him look small. He hunches over and he he does the fist pumping thing. And he's so happy to be there and they're high-fiving. And I don't care. And I don't care. Because I don't know why they're happy. I mean, I know they're, they're happy maybe to get more money because they're on main roster now. But, like, 
I just don't know why they why are, why why. Also, when they were wrestling at NXT, they were feeding off an audience they had built a relationship with when they would do that stuff. This is why it would make so much more sense for the revival to be on SmackDown because and okay, and this is the treatment they got. American Alpha comes out, they're facing two job jobbers, one close to our heart, Sasha Derevko, local guy. Um and all the other tag teams, such as they are, the Ascension Vaud villains, uh Zack Ryder and his imaginary friend uh Mojo Raleigh. collectively known as the Hype Bro. <laughs> the Hype Bro, exactly. They all come out. They surround the ring to scout the American Alpha team. And I told you this in the recap. is like, if, if this is American Alpha's competitions for the soon-to-be SmackDown tag belts. They should be feeling great. Just hand them to American Alpha. They, they just give Don't them. even put up the pretense that they're going to have any sort of tournament yeah, ex- because no one else has a chance. Exactly. Exactly. So they all come out to scout these guys. And, uh, you know, it was a squash from start to finish. They just c- completely killed Mikey O'Shea and Mike Vegas, Sasha Derevko. Um, Afterwards, though, all the other tag teams got in the ring, and we had a huge tag team brawl. Here's my problem with this, dude. The Revival is a team that prides itself on being old school, fists not, what is it, fists not flips. Correct. Okay. So they automatically have the kind of confidence that you would then want to scout. Because you come to the ring and say, okay, what's the chink in these guys' armor? Where, what weaknesses do they have? And why do, do any have? of these teams need to scout American Alpha when they were all within the last year or so? Maybe with the exception of these. The Vaude villains know them very well. In NXT. Yeah. What is there to scout? The Revival, on the other hand, already have the feeling of, we've been there, we've done that. Even though they're a relatively new team, because they're still in NXT. Yeah. They have the, the, the aura of been there, done that. American Alpha has the aura of rookies who are happy to be here. That's why it that's why it would make so much more sense for the revival who are a team that feel like they belong in an established show as yeah. opposed to American Alpha who if they were given another year in NXT would then be rid of that happy to be here thing. They would have moved on to the next phase of their characterization as a team. Exactly yeah. correct. That's why American Alpha should have stayed in NXT, had a great program with the Authors of Pain, which would have got them to that next level because they're no longer happy to be there. Now they've faced adversity, real adversity, because those guys are huge and they're mean and they don't wear fancy things. They just whoop ass. Yeah. They're basically... I mean, Amer- uh, the Authors of Pain are kind of like the Revival-ish. I mean, they're both heel teams. They're both take no prisoners. They're both no frills. Yeah. That's their thing. Yeah. And so it doesn't. It makes sense for American Alpha, who are a team that are diametrically opposed to these guys, to still be there. Oh, yeah. Putting them over. They get over. Yeah. It makes so they much more sense. They could have had sense. a great four-month program between those two teams. Yeah. Yeah, but instead, and the revival, cock of the walk, chest pumped out, as opposed to, yeah, we're happy to be here, and Jason Jordan's doing a real a weird slump where he's not showing off. This is how big I am. I'm a big dude. That's my problem. It has nothing to do, and people give me, people have given me shit on Twitter, at real going in raw. Um, when I say things like this, and they're like, oh, fuck you, I like American Alpha. I forgot that before. I'm most of, the vast majority of you guys are very respectful, but every once in a while. We're huge American Alpha fans. We're huge fans of we these like guys. Them and we a think lot. in five years they're going to be, as singles competitors, huge. Yep. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's not surprising. It's not a, a, a mistake that people will chant Kurt Angle's theme when Gable's out there. Yep. Because he has. In, in so many positive respects, a lot of the same qualities as Kurt yeah. Angle, and yeah. people are excited about that. Yes. So we're huge American Alpha fans. It just, when you when you are placing things where they should be, it makes so much more sense for them to be in NXT. And yeah. I, NXT is a fantastic brand. It's not, yeah. I'm not saying, oh, they should dump them back they off on NXT. They should be demoted. Yeah. They should be running that tag division as the anchor, as the gold standard, and going up against the Authors of Pain, who are you know, monsters, yeah. you know, that's what they should be doing. Yeah. They're like, you know, the Scooby-Doo gang going up against terrifying Frankenstein and, monsters. And another thing, I don't think having American Alpha face some local enhancement talent is necessarily the best way to showcase I don't do shit for their them. skills. I don't do shit the for The best them. way to showcase their skills is, have, is to have them in, in, in consistent, competitive matches that shows off how good a wrestlers they are, right. not two-minute squash matches. Right, exactly. Because you're not going to give them any sort of decent character material to work with. Right. Put them in good matches. Right. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Miz and Maurice 
Uh, oh, that was funny. Floating in the ocean that uh, Renee Young calls the, the SmackDown See, and Live the, and news this, desk. This is a case where, as I mentioned the, the first week it debuted, there's opportunities for for good comedic and, bits. And that, that's how they're using it. Somebody's listening to the show, Larson. Somebody's listening to the show. I think so. Look, we haven't fallen out of the top 150 on iTunes sports category uh, for quite a while. So maybe somebody's actually paying attention. I don't know. Miz and Maurice, uh, they were they joined up as the guests. Oh, they're just like this way. Like that, exactly. And uh, then they run a package, they come back, and they're both laying on the desk, literally about to have a live sex show right in front of Renee Young. I'm hoping she gets involved. Uh, maybe Dean Ambrose comes in, he gets involved. <laughs> <laughs> we get all I that. mean, the set's large enough to come. The set everybody. is huge. You can have the entire roster having a live sex show there. I'd love to see that. That'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. Oh, man. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, yeah, they were just doing their thing. Yeah, it was I mean, pretty funny. The, the, I, I'm... I'm I don't even care anymore that the IC title is going to waste on The Miz because they're entertaining. Yeah, so they what are. do I care? Yeah, they're pretty entertaining. I mean, so honestly, dude, honestly, Apollo Crews is probably going to win this thing at SummerSlam, although I don't know. Miz is doing such good work right now. I'm really hesitant to think they're going to put it on him. Why wasn't Apollo Crews? Why wasn't John Cena? And why wasn't AJ Styles? John Piles Cena. On the uh, show? John and, and AJ boarded a plane to New Zealand. Oh. Yeah, Crowley King. We're not going to be here, here, here. We have a lot of people in Australia. I'm not going to start pissing them off with my fucking stupid accents. Uh, let's see here. But if your show is already short on main event talent, yeah, you kind of need them to show up every week. Holy crap, you know what I forgot to do? Hmm. I forgot to do this at the top of the show. Thanks to everybody who's on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We totally passed the $2,000 mark, Larson. We're closing in on that next goal. We're going to sort of reevaluate our goals and stuff because, like, the next milestone we're already doing it. is another podcast. We're only doing, like, we're, all, we're already doing, like, two additional podcasts. Yeah, I think we're going to go in a couple weeks and kind of revamp things on the page entirely. We're gonna, Well, this, this is the thing, so nobody freaks out. Look, number one, number one. Anybody at any time is it we totally don't hold anything against you guys if you drop out of the Patreon thing. If you've gotten your reward and you're like, okay, well, I'm good, I've supported, I'm dropping out. We it's your money. We appreciate yeah. anything and yeah. everything and any support, and we wouldn't put it against you. I know we've changed our streaming schedule, and so if some people were, you know, found that they could make the streaming schedule before and now they can't, yeah. Um totally would yeah. not put it against you. We love yeah. all you guys, everybody out there that's that's putting in on this. Um so, but that's exciting. We passed the $1,000 mark, and I just wanted to give a shout-out, even as from yesterday, uh, Jermaine Dale, Bobby Ensley, Eric Barron, Dan Renslow, Lorenzo Bellini, uh, Sam Disney, and Tim Souter all put in money on the Patreon. So we want to say thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. I always like giving the shout-outs there. Um, yeah, the Miz and Maurice, I, I honestly think that Miz, they're doing, they're so money together. I've come around on the fact that the IC title isn't really. I mean, you know, we, we can have, we can let Baron Corbin, Callisto, and Apollo Crews sort of figure out who's going to, who's next in line. Because I don't think, I think Apollo Crews obviously has made the best case for being the next guy, but I don't think any of them are at the level of entertainment value that The Miz is at. And I think SmackDown needs to have their champions be top level guys. Oh yeah. And the Miz to me right now, like what he's doing with Maurice is he's he's turned me around. Like I to me he's kind of top levelish. Not I'm not saying he's world title, but on this on this dilapidated roster. Yeah. This depleted roster. Yeah. I I can see Miz as being a believable world champ and I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if I go maybe. that far. I don't know if I go that All far. All right, maybe you're right, but still. His uh, what he is now, I think right now is a ceiling. Yeah, but it's a really entertaining ceiling, and I'm, I'm happy. I mean, like I'm he'll happy be entertaining this. for two, three weeks, and then he'll do something, and, and then we'll say, "Why the hell is Miz on TV? Why well, does my, he have the belt?" My thing, well, I know, but my thing is this: like with the roster the way it was before the brand split, it made total sense. You need to elevate that IC belt. But put, okay, put him in a program with Alberto Del Rio, and I think they both can make. I think they oh, both yeah. can make each other look really yeah, good. Yeah, and they yeah. make the belt look really yeah. good. So maybe that could be next. Um, but I, I would, I'll would i put it this way. I would rather see Alberto Del Rio and Miz feuding over the title than Apollo Creed and uh, and Miz fighting over the belt. I would like to see them try to build a storyline around Alberto... Sorry, uh, build a storyline around Apollo Crews and the Miz fighting over the Inter Intercontinental title. Because they're not doing that now. No, there's no story right now. Yeah. And there's 
But because of that, a week away. as you know, regardless, of they, they should be doing that. Um, the Miz still looks like he's on another level or two over Apollo Crews. Yeah. Just by virtue of the fact that he's a veteran, he's a former world champion, he's a current IC champion, and him and Reese are just in their own world and, and they're and hilarious. That, and that should be the story, part of the story they're using to build up to this match. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But they're not. It's weird. I know. So anyways, uh, let's see here. Uh, in the women's division, the women's division is a, is, is a fascinating beast. In, on SmackDown. Yeah. It is a fascinating beast. And, and it, it has me captivated. I'm happy that they're giving the women's division a decent amount of time every week. Yeah, they are. The they're, they're Say what you will. They're utilizing. Somebody mentioned this on Twitter. They're utilizing everybody. They were, they're really trying to get the shine on everybody. And there yep. was some really interesting stuff going on this week. Um, I mean, it doesn't. It didn't all work necessarily. No, but... But they're, they're all out there. They're trying, to, they're do trying to do something with them. It's kind of interesting. Um, Becky Lynch comes out for a you know they're gonna try to do this Becky Lynch versus Eva Marie match yeah um, Eva Marie comes out uh, to another great uh, intro voiceover guy um, she checks her leg makes sure it's okay yeah gives the old thumbs up uh, and then her titties come popping out she had a, a wardrobe malfunction she she did some maneuver and her well they, I don't, came down. they didn't show it they like cut away and they cut yeah, back. Okay, is that what? Because then I, she just, was holding I, was, I her. thought I was just paying attention to Twitter because all you guys at Real Going in Raw do a great job of keeping me busy during the shows uh, when I'm live tweeting on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and I look and she's like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Am I looking at what I'm looking at right yeah, now?" Yeah, they cut away and they cut back and she's holding her top up. Yeah, her boobies. And uh, so they cover her up. She leaves. Becky Lynch gets on the mic. Thank God, and says, "I want to fight." And. Uh, I love Becky Lynch so much. Yeah, she's good. Alexa Bliss comes out. It's her birthday. She's ready to throw down. I love Alexa Bliss. I think she's great. I think she's got a great future. She comes out. They put on a decent match. Alexa Bliss ends up going over. I like her finishers. Yeah. I like she does the setup one, which I forget what it's called. And then she does the the bliss, whatever it's called. The twisted bliss. Yeah. And then she gets up on the top and she does the splash. But to uh, to set up the win, even Marie comes back out. With a new bit of voiceover. That's right. That's now right. ready to compete. Yeah. Now ready to compete. Eva Marie. Exactly. And then Becky Lynch is uh, distracted. Distracted. Uh, Alexa Bliss picks up the win on her birthday. So good job. I thought that was a really well done little scenario. Also in the women's division, um, uh, Carmella, who I, I still feel needs to. She changed it a little bit this week. Oh, okay. Um, she changed up her shtick a little bit. Uh, and I don't see her getting far from that character that she's always been. Yeah. Um, but maybe with more reps, it'll come off as less awkward. I don't know what it I know, is. I know. I think that's half of it is she has the thing, which is obviously still influenced by her relationship with Enzo and Cass. But right. then when she does on her on her own, mm. it feels really stiff. Yeah. And hopefully, if she just does it more, finds I wonder if a way there's to... still a couple, Carmella and Big Cass. Oh. They were as of the breaking ground thing, oh. and I don't know. If, I don't know if the brand split has affected them in the way it supposedly affected uh, Alberto Del Rio and uh, Paige. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um, so she comes out and she this time Natalia tries to break out on her. She hits X, breaks out, but Carmella reverses. Carmella is able to reverse it, and uh, they get in the ring. Natalia uh, gives her the you know good working over. Does some good uh, high flute and show boating. Yeah, it was actually pretty funny. Like she sat on her, that mm-hmm. was funny. Yeah, that was good. And then uh, Carmella gets the upper hand. She uh, makes her tap out. Yeah, I thought that was cool, man. I think that that that's a big. That is a big because now you can have Natalia beat her a couple times, reestablish her dominance, and Carmella does look stronger for it. Yeah. So it's not just a one side. And also, thing. I think the way they booked that match helped cover up some of Carmella's. I mean, granted, Natalia is a great yeah. wrestler. Yeah. Um, but Carmella, you know, doesn't have as much experience, obviously. Right. So kind of the way they booked that match kind of covered up some of Carmella's shortcomings as an in-ring competitor. Yeah. And also gave an opportunity, if she does a program with, with Natalia, to maybe learn some stuff. Yeah. Because Natalia is really, really good. Well, you put them in, you, you know, you put somebody like Carmella in the ring with Natalia. That's why this works so well, is that you put her in there with somebody who knows how to work with other people. You know, who knows how to make other people look yeah. good. And that's sort of like, that's always a turning point for a wrestler. If you can start making somebody else look good, yeah. then you know you've been around yeah. a little while. You know what you're doing. Yeah. And in the continuing saga of Heath Slater, my personal favorite storyline right now. I will say this. I noticed you put a tweet up uh, while you were live tweeting saying that that his conversation with Rhino this week would convince me yeah. that my my 
I don't know if I would say dislike towards Heath Slater. My apathy. I said it would turn. I said it would. It would turn you into a fan. I think what I meant was it'll turn you a little bit onto him. And it was good. It was I don't. Good. I don't mind the Heath Slater when he's not screaming. Yeah, I know. I know when he's when he's when he's. It depends on what he's saying, though. I don't know because that, that whole thing when he'd get in the ring recently and shoot on the fact that you know he's the best unsigned free agent. And I wanted you want me to sign my resume. I thought that was funny. I thought that was legit funny. He sort of tu- again talking about turning corners. He sort of turned the corner from the guy that just annoys me to the guy that like I like unironically. Yeah, like he's he surpassed the I like him ironically. Now I just kind of like him. But that was a good back and forth between him and Ryan. It was a it was a what there was a lot of good chemistry between those yes. guys because Heath Slater was essentially asking Ryan on a job for him. Yeah, he said my two kids and then up to four kids. Boy, said I my I, I got two kids at home. I just I just put in a swimming pool. Mm-hmm. And Ryan says I can't lose to you. I got constituents back home to That's impress. That's right. Now that he's a candidate for public office. Yeah, he's my four kids are my constituents. I thought you just said he had two kids. And then Rhino asked him, well, what kind of pool you got? Yeah. Said, it was a very subdued conversation. Yeah. It was hilarious. The only time Heath kind of raised his voice is like, what does it matter what kind of pool I have? Yeah, yeah. And then he says, I have a very nice above ground pool. <laughs> I'm like, like he was self-conscious about the fact that it was an above ground pool. Well, I think, you know, above ground pools typically aren't seen as, as right. extravagant as below right. ground pools. Right. Or exactly. in the ground pools, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. It was a great little moment. I thought for sure Slater was going to go over and no. get his contract. But you were right. They're going to carry the story They're right out. They're going to milk this for months. And I'm fine with that. Because, of course, uh, Slater ends up losing to Rhino. Um, they do a great close-up on Slater when he's in the ring defeated. Where you really feel that this guy has let his family down. And he doesn't know what, what is, what's going to happen next in his life. Yeah. You know? And... Um, it's funny too, like a little side note here. When they they were showing him in close up, they cut to the Wyatt family little thing, the plap thing. And I was like, is he gonna join the Wyatt family? A lot of people too, is he gonna join the Wyatt family? What the <laughs> fuck? But it wasn't, it was just coincidental. <laughs> so, anyways, cut to backstage. Uh, Shane and Daniel Bryan are back there, uh, the vice principals, and they have a contract in hand for Heath Slater. Yeah. And they're saying, Boy, he showed a lot of heart back there. I know he didn't win, but we should sign him anyway. Yeah. That's a great idea. Of course, Heath Slater, in a comedy of errors, comes backstage, head full of steam, says, screw you guys, I'm better than this place, I don't need your contract, thinking that they, you know because he lost, yeah. he wasn't going to get it. Didn't understand, didn't know that they were going to offer him one. He storms out, and he says, well, I guess he's not going to sign this. So the continuing saga of Heath Slater, which I find thoroughly entertaining at this point, and is a highlight of SmackDown to me, um, they they did they did run a Cena AJ package. We should note that. Yeah, rather than have them actually be on the show. I know it's it's so weird. Like they couldn't cut out like it's a live show. They couldn't cut out right after the show and get there. But then when you're traveling to New Zealand, you're like traveling into the future or the past or some shit. So they had to make up time. I guess. Future, I think. Yeah, you're traveling to the future. Right there, it's just past like we're filming is a one twenty. Right there, right now, it's like four o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. All right, you want to answer some questions? Hey, let's answer some questions. Matt, if you guys what? want to uh, do your questions, just follow a little prompt at the bottom. Uh, hit us up on the Twitters at Real Going In Raw and hashtag it FQ. Correct. Are you ready? Yeah. Matt Linder, will Ambrose face any repercussions for a shoot on Brock? I don't think so because it was brought up last night on Talking Smack. Interesting. Um, when Renee Young was talking to Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan said, "Yeah, there's a lot of superstars on Raw who are lazy." <laughs> That's fucked up. Um, I would I would think this. I, I would have actually speculated that he would have gotten a more trouble talking about the scripted aspect of the show. Mm. That I would have thought he'd get more trouble in. But I don't think Dean Ambrose cares. And I think, and if he's right, he says Vince McMahon. He says I'm Vince McMahon's favorite wrestler. And I think Vince was sitting off camera because Dean kept on looking at him and saying, "Yeah, he's not going to tell you anything else or something like that." That's I don't funny. know. It, it was it was cool. I think I think I think I think Vince is really high on Dean Ambrose. I think he is. I don't think I don't see how you couldn't be like. Especially I watched that. A lot of people are like, "Ah, the podcast is awkward." I fuck. I I, I thought that I just thought seems he, like Dean. He came off as so fucking real. That's that's what surprised me about it. Like yeah. this dude who is is who he is is who you see became world champion. I know that's crazy. Frosty Gambino. First off, was Steve a little triggered yesterday? I love that term. Triggered makes me laugh so hard. 
And do you think the PG era is slowly fading away? I think the PG era has been kind of done with for a little while now. Yeah, they're probably, what, in a PG-13 era now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Something like uh, that. The new era is, yeah. is sort of... The new era. Is the new... The last night it was the nude era. Almost. Of, uh, Eva Marie. Uh, John Rush. What a rush! <laughs> what a... John Rush! Sorry. What do you think of Braun's podcast with Austin? Really makes him seem like a great fan. Bro. And brought me around to him. I haven't heard it yet. Uh, I haven't heard it yet. I'll, I'll, maybe when I go for my jog today, I'll, I'll pop yeah, on the podcast. George Richards, if you could choose... This is a great question. If you could choose five parts of memorable championship belts and make them into one belt, what would you pick and why? Okay, we need wings, A. Eh? Yeah, and also wings. I want the United States... Like, the map of the United States. The, plate, the old the U.S. Little, title. Like the brushed the brushed mirror. Yeah. Like it's a faded mirror. So that in the middle with the wings around NWA it. NWA belts always look like they made the belt and they put them outside for five years yeah, in harsh conditions. To tarnish them a little bit. A lot. Five years. Those things were very tarnished. Yeah, I know. Um, so we have the United States with wings around it. With rings, wings around it. Um, that's two things. We need three more. What leather do we want to use? White leather. White leather. Okay. No. Uh, like the turquoise leather the the uh, warrior had for the IC belt. I was going to say yellow, but turquoise works better. Turquoise, I like turquoise. Yeah. Okay, turquoise that's leather, good. That's better. Okay, so we got three parts of it. So um, turquoise leather. Mm-hmm. Map of the United States. Map of the United States. Wings. Wings. Um, oh, but the map of the United States spins. Okay, good. So we got the spinner. That's good. And one more piece. Um, Can we just have the, have the fist come out of it? <laughs> that's not, it's never been on a belt, though. Okay, we'll have the fist. Let the fist come out. The fist will come out. That's the best uh, addition to any Oh, belt. no, 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 no. What? No, dude, come on. Come on. Come on. The Triple H belt. Oh, yeah. Sorry. we got to have Triple H faces all over it. It's it's the, the map of the U.S. is emblazoned with the face of Triple H. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, precious cartoons. Do you guys think we'll get a broken Heath Slater angle sometime soon? Once 2K17 comes out, somebody needs to make that belt. Better. Yeah, that's a good belt. Yeah. Broken Heath Slater. Uh, no, that, that belong unless he goes through an incident that that belong is exclusively to broken Matt Hardy. Uh, T Austin seventeen plan the two year plan you have for an Ambrose championship run. I think we have the first eight months. Yeah, all building up to a, a program and a blow off match against Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Him and Bray, just him and Bray trading it back and forth. Yeah, for two years, that's good. For Bobby Hensley. Do you guys have any idea what they're doing with this Eva Marie thing on SmackDown? I, I do believe that somehow, some way, it's going to turn into maybe they'll have a battle royal for the the like a number one contender spot. I, I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, for the SmackDown Women's for the belt. SmackDown Women's Championship, it's going to end up being Eva Marie. They're going to build this type of heat up so big, and Becky Lynch is going to come out on top. She's going to be the first. She needs to be the you first. You don't think they're going to do the the opposite of that, where they're going to build this heat and then somehow have Eva Marie? The only time, like the first time she actually wrestles, is to, to win the belt. Win the belt. It wouldn't surprise me, but I think they know better. I think the whole Finn thing makes me think they know better now than to do that. They need to reward Becky Lynch. They have to. Oh yeah, I hope they do. Uh, paradoxal M one. You mentioned on the Going in Raw podcast Benjamin returning for WrestleMania season. What about him in the inevitable annual IC ladder match? Um, I mean, that's sort of traditionally what he did back then. I remember he was in a lot of ladder matches. Yeah. And a lot of IC belt things. Yeah. I the, According to, according to I think it was Wrestling Observer, might have been PW Insider, I forget. Um, it was mentioned that the original plan for him was to keep him at an upper mid-card level. So maybe in the AJ Styles area. Yeah. Which would, I think would be probably better than yeah. the IC title. Yeah. But if you look, if you have Miz and Alberto Del Rito competing for the IC title... God damn it. Did I say Dorito? Yeah. All right. I'm okay with that. You're always by. I like it. Alberto Dorito. I didn't mean to that time. Um, Miz and Alberto Dorito. Okay. Uh, challenging for the IC title. That Shelton would should be immediately at their level. Yeah. Uh, Robert Hay. Hey. Do you think Del Rio could be a champion again in the future? Yeah. Bob Hay here. Yeah, I think Del Rio could can make a play for the uh, WWE World Resi title. Resi sign up and sign an extension, sign a new contract, and absolutely. Uh, Joshua, Mc but not within the next two years because that's all Dean and Bray. Yeah, Joshua McKee. 
Key. Who do you think has done better with their women? I think he thinks SmackDown, Raw is featured the same three to four each week. Mix I'll say this. Raw feels bigger. SmackDown to me is more entertaining. Yeah. Make of that what you will. Whatever you prefer, you yep. know. Uh Mizael Riviera. Or Rivera, sorry. Nice name. I like the their Twitter handle, Sexual Voodoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the tag division on SmackDown is so small, like four teams. Do you think the tag on SmackDown and Women on Raw should better benefit brands? Oh, I hate doing the same. Uh, oh, oh, should there be like one a tag division on SmackDown and a women division on Raw as opposed to as opposed to wait a second. Do you think tag on SmackDown and women on Raw bad? I think he's just trying to say should they improve the those divisions on each brand? Or is he saying that should they be exclusive to brands? I don't know. I don't think they should be exclusive. I think each show needs to be its own wrestling promotion. Yeah. That's how it should be booked. And so they each need their own thing. Yeah. Connor J. Do you think Luke Harper will end up on Raw with Braun then have Sister Abigail on Raw I think and SmackDown? Bra- I think Braun is done with the, with the with the Wyatts. I think he's his own thing now. And I think Luke is going to go to SmackDown. Yeah. Bailey Beaver. Who are your man and woman crushes on the WWE roster right now? His are Alexa Bliss and Kevin Owens. Those are good crushes to have. They are. Mine would be... Well, your female crush is Paige. Yeah, but I'm over her now. She's oh, nowhere okay. to be found. She's injured. She's got backstage heat. She's with Alberto Dorito. I, I you know, I, I was going to wear my Paige shirt today, but I didn't. Okay. Um, instant, I didn't go glorious today. A lot, of, a lot of good compliments on the tie and shirt. Yeah. But I'm sporting. This is the gift of black shirt. Drink it in, man. Okay. Um... My 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 crush right now for a spell it was even Sasha Banks. My crush right now is probably Becky Lynch, man. She just kills it. Think about it. ever since the Divas Revolution thing mm-hmm. came about, she's been the one constant. She's been consistent. You know, Charlotte's had her ups and downs. Uh, Sa- uh, Charlotte's had her ups and downs. Sasha's had her ups and downs. I mean, she's been injured a little bit. Yeah. Um, Becky Lynch has been there every step of the fucking way, wanting to fight day in, day out. She always looks like a million bucks. She always is great on the mic, and she her merch looks great. She's the perfect female women's division package. She needs to be ch- she'll, that belt, whatever that belt looks like. The new women's division championship on SmackDown would look great on Becky Lynch. Who's your male crush? I know I have one. I probably have several. Uh, I'll, I'll say mine are Sasha and... Oh, God. Are you kidding me? Finn. Of course it's Finn. Oh, yeah. For it's you, Finn. it's Finn, obviously. It's definitely yeah. Finn. That jacket? Boy, that gets me going every time I see that. Do you prefer the collar popped or unpopped? Oh, popped. Okay. I like when he's popping it. <laughs> okay. That's what I like. The action of popping. The action of popping is always, gotcha. that's, that, that always that's that's my man crush I'm gonna right there. I'm going to say Sasha, and I'm going to say, man. You want to snug up with Kevin Owens. A man. little bit. Yeah. Either him or Bray. Bray's got a nice beard. Oh, yeah. Bray's a beautiful man. I love him. He's great. Uh, Adam Galloper. Big old. Or, you know what? My dark horse candidate for man crush Rusev. <laughs> That's a good answer, I too. love that beef. Yeah. I love the beef. You don't want him to put away that beef. I don't want him to put away the beef. <laughs> put away that beef. <laughs> put away the beef. How is that not the... Ke- that, that's not the line of the century. Put away that beef. Put that beef away. <laughs> that was so good. Adam... Yeah, that should be fucking Reigns' new catchphrase. <laughs> put, him, put that beef away. Put that beef away. Adam Galloper. A Nexus, this is a great question, composed of sitcom characters. Oh, Jesus. Same age as the time of airing. Okay. Invade the WWE, who were in the stable. How many people were in the Nexus? Fucking like seven, eight, oh, nine, geez. something like that. We can, we can call it, we can call it, let's see. The original, I don't know the original Nexus, but the, the Nexus. This is the Wade Barrett, right? The Wade Barrett version of the Nexus. Like Wade, Daniel Bryan, right? Yeah, Wade, Daniel Bryan, Ryback. Um, Heath Slater, uh, Heath Slater, Darren Young, Justin Gabriel. There is another dude, uh, African Mace- American fella, but I oh. no, it wasn't Mason Ryan. He came along later. He was an OG Nexus. I, I forget what his name was. I always, I always think that it's Titus O'Neil, but it's not. But it's no, it was another big uh, black dude, hmm. um, and I forget who it was. He used to wear a mask. Oh, okay, I remember, remember that, that guy. Dude? Yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. gone for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. Um, so that, that's it for now. Let's say seven. Whatever. Okay. Seven. Seven sitcom characters. B. Arthur. Well, you need a sitcom character. What was her name? You want Dorothy. Maude? Or do you want uh, Dorothy. Dorothy. her name from... Uh, Blanche? No. What was her name on Golden Girls? Uh, shoot. Um, Blanche was uh, Rue McClanahan. Yeah. 
Um, Who's Estelle Getty? I know all their real names. Yeah, I do too. I don't remember what they're fucking... All right, B. Arthur from Golden Girls. B. Arthur from Golden Girls. <laughs> That's a good one. The Greatest American Hero, William Cat. Okay. You go. Um, George Costanza. I like all of mine are Norman Lear characters. I know. <laughs> George Costanza. Um, hold on. Uh, uh, Buster Bluth. Uh, uh, Mackenzie Phillips. Did you put Buster Bluth on there? Buster Bluth. That's great. I like Mackenzie Phillips. Um, that's five? That's five. I don't even know Mackenzie Phillips' name in whatever fucking show. What show was she on? It wasn't Different Strokes. It was... Uh, and Valerie Harper was on it. Oh, no, it wasn't uh, Valerie Harper. It was... Uh, what, oh. Who was dating uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen? Oh, Valerie Bertinelli. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. No, was it Valerie Bertinelli? She was on a sitcom. I remember which one it was, though. I like that we're all named... By and large, Sandy Duncan. Oh, Sandy, Sandy Duncan. Duncan. That's who I want. Oh, too. so that's the show that used to have uh, Justine Bate. Oh, Jason, uh, Bateman. Jason Bateman on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the robot girl from Small Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to be in it. The robot from Small Wonder. <laughs> and everything they do is just over cranked or under cranked. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's great. There's your nexus. All right, Ronan Leonard. Last question. If you had the t- if you two had the chance to be part of the WWE, what would be your gimmick? And what would be your ring gear? It would be uh, Sk- uh, Skyler and Haas. Skyler that, Haas? Skyler and Haas. Uh, what would be our ring gear? I, no, honestly, no, honestly, I, no, this is individual. Oh. Oh, really? We're not going to be talking? No. Look, look at episodes of Fuck Wrestling. Look at my shit. Uh, or NX Steve. And look at my shit. I love my gear. I've got the horns. Yeah. It's all yellow and black. I've got a gun. Do you still have the blindfold? I've got a blindfold. I've got a, 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 a crucifix necklace. Yeah. Even though I'm not a particularly religious fella, um, I've got like a bullet a bullet vest. Um, I've got some cool tights. I don't do trunks. I got some cool tights. But then I also like me in two cases. Look, whatever I do is myself in the two K games. That's what I'd want to do in the two K games. I come out in underwear with a sometimes a jock strap over. Yeah. It. And then I have wrestling headgear. Yeah. And usually no shoes. In the in the and no shirt. My latest iteration of fuck wrestling, I believe I basically just have Finn Balor's Fonzie gimmick. But Paige comes out with me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's me then. I want to come out in a suit of oh, armor. Oh, and I'm just covered in Jimmy John's <laughs> endorsements. Are. I stole that from P. Break Lesnar. Um, I want to uh, come out in a suit of armor. <laughs> I mean, if Roman Reigns could wear a vest, why can't I wear a suit of armor? And also, I'm wrestling for Dory Funk's uh, Amarillo. Uh, Texas promotion, oh, okay. but I'm gonna convince him that I I, I can that shoot can a wrestler shoot in, the butt. in the butt. You guys need to check out Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast with Terry Funk. It's a wealth of awesome old school information. It sounds pretty great, including the fact that Tommy Dreamer wanted to shoot a wrestler in the ass as part of an angle Insanity. in the ring. Insanity. And Dory Funk said, "No way." Insanity. Yeah. We have one video question from a returning defending video question MVP. Richie Watson. Richie, what do you have on your mind today? Hey, what's up, Stephanie and La Senior? I'm just wondering, has there ever been a wrestler you just didn't like from day one? The character or just them in general? And to me, it has to be Matt Hardy. Or I should say, broken Matt Hardy. He's so broken. But I just, I've never liked him. He just, to me, he's come down as a douchebag. And I'm probably the only one who doesn't like this final deletion thing. Delete. Just to get everyone going, delete, delete, delete. It's a broken record, sorry to say. Yeah, I'm salty, but it's good. You need salt, you sweat it. So, come at me, bro. That's my question anyway. I think the only wrestler that really stood out to me, and sometimes I think I might be unfair, there's two of them. Okay. There's two of them, and I've been kind of well-known on record, and I feel kind of bad. I don't like, you know what, I don't like being negative. If I don't be negative, I like that it's on somebody like Brock Lesnar. Or like in your case, it's negative on how they're booking a character who they could be making a lot of money on. MVP and Mr. Kennedy were around the same were around at the same time. MVP always bugged me because basically because of his look. I thought he was a really really poorly designed creator wrestler because he had sleeves but then shorts like and it was a singlet. And then he had like goofy jewelry and he had like the the football like tape stuff around the eyes or the whatever they put on there. I didn't like his look. I never saw anything appealing about his in-ring ability. If they bring him back, I could totally be on board with him because 
when I saw him, I was just like, I don't like this guy at all. I didn't get it. I didn't like it. And then Mr. Kennedy to me was never anything but a guy who like they would lower the microphone for and he would say, Mr. Kennedy. Like, that's not a fucking story. That's not a gimmick. And then years later, I find out that he's Mr. Botchfest and he's like hurting Randy Orton and John Cena, two of the biggest draws of their generations. And he just, and then he goes to TNA and runs down Triple H. Yeah. It was just all bitter. And I hope, I hope he's doing well for himself. And if he ever comes back, that'd be cool. Like, I hope that he doesn't botch anymore. And he was a TNA world champion. And I wish him well. I wish good things for him. Yeah. But I never, I saw them day one and I was like, I'm not into these guys. I'm not going to root for them. They're not bringing anything that I appreciate. The first name that came to mind for me was uh, Batista. Oh, yeah. Granted, I didn't watch as often back when he was popular as I do now. Um, And it wasn't until the end of his last run when he obviously just kind of didn't really care Mm -hmm. that I I found him entertaining. Yeah. And then, you know, how he's carried himself since he left the WWE Mm -hmm. this last time. Um, and what he said about it. Classy dude, yeah. smart dude, yeah. charismatic dude. Yeah. He, he always, he, he had the the disadvantage in, in my eyes, and I think in yours too, as being your prototypical Vince guy. Yeah. In terms of his look. Yeah. And he had, on top of that, he had the little belly button star tattoo, which always was really distracting. Um, but he was never, you know, that good in the ring. Yeah, yeah. He Here's the thing about Batista. There were two times when I actually really liked him. One was when they booked him against Triple H, as the baby after oh, yeah, turning yeah, on him yeah, in evolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got carried in that wave. Yeah. Of when he went down like that and decided to compete for Triple H's title. Yeah. Because by that time he had been established. He was no longer just the big brute guy. He was his own guy. Yeah. And I thought that was a, a turn, a baby turn that was that was executed really well. Yeah. And then towards the end of his run, the fir- the first time around before he went to Hollywood when he was a heel and mm-hmm. he would wear the really douchey hipster like the glad sunglasses inside and he was just a dick but he did it really in an obnoxious way yeah i don't know if you were watching it that on point. and off yeah yeah um i remember seeing his uh his retirement speech mm-hmm. and he was pretty funny and even me i was sort of on and off but i think i was a bit more on than off and i was watching that and i was like that that's a quality heel right there that's a quality heel run right there um, and I, it was kind of kind of akin to when The Rock was doing the heel Hollywood sellout guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and people weren't automatically cheering him because he had been gone for a long time. Like, he was around. He was a Hollywood guy. He was a dick. And people, he, he was, it was a decent heel run. Same with Batista. Um, but, yeah, when he first came in, and they were just obviously pushing him to the moon. I mean, not when he first, I mean, he was Deacon Batista when he first came in. But when they did the Batista thing. Um, but yeah, for me, it was always MVP. They were always, those guys always just looked like U.S. T- perennial U.S. title guys. That's what they always were. And I never saw anything more in them about that. Yeah. And they never proved me wrong about any of that stuff. So I, my intuition, I believe, was correct. They have been deleted. <laughs> but evidently, they want to bring MVP back. So I don't know. Maybe he can prove me wrong. And maybe I'll be a fan of his again. Yeah. Or for a first time, rather. Yeah. All right, that's it. I think that's it for now, Larson. Uh, we're going to be back on Friday with the dirt sheet with all sorts of salacious news and rumors and gossip and all that great stuff. Um, you know, as always, if you guys want to uh, ask us some questions, do so at Twitter at RealGoingInRaw, hashtag at FQ. Yes. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.